Pessoal, tudo bem? Aqui é Fábio Santos, canal Espiritualidade Independente. Hoje, apresentando para vocês a primeira entrevista de Corey Good para o Brasil. Foi por causa do anúncio dele no Experience 2020, em setembro, 18, 19 e 20 do ano que vem. Então, fui lá me encontrar com ele. Eu vou mostrar para vocês agora toda a saga desse encontro, desde a saída de casa até a entrevista e tudo que ele tem a dizer para a gente. Coisas muito interessantes, inclusive... É uma revelação de que o novo documentário dele, o Cosmic Secret, né? ou então o Segredo Cósmico, terá legendas em português, olha só que legal. Ele pensou especialmente no Brasil, falou isso para a gente e revelou isso na entrevista. Um pequeno detalhe, gente, eu já peço desculpas de antemão, a qualidade da imagem não está das melhores, a gente teve um problema técnico, mas é, eu resolvi insistir com essa publicação pra, porque a mensagem está sendo passada, então, espero que vocês não se importem muito na questão da imagem e foquem no conteúdo, tá bom, gente? <risos> espero que vocês gostem de coração. Um abraço. Olha só, pessoal, são 5 e meia da manhã, aqui no Canadá. Está escuro ainda, a estrada está cheia, estou indo para o porto. Tem uma viagem para os Estados Unidos na frente aí. Vocês vão acompanhar um pouquinho aqui como é que foi a minha jornada Acordei cedo, né? Acordei às 5 horas <risos> Estamos indo aí para o porto, bastante gente na estrada E vamos que vamos Fala gente, cheguei aqui no aeroporto de Toronto Estou correndo um pouco porque a imigração para os Estados Unidos Ela é feita aqui em Toronto, no aeroporto de Toronto Então a fila estava muito grande Agora já são sete e pouco da manhã Já... Já tá claro lá fora E tô pegando o um avião daqui a pouco, gente Volto a conversar com vocês, tá bom? Beijo, tchau, tchau Olá, pessoal, acabei de chegar aqui no aeroporto de Denver, no Colorado Bom, vocês já sabem que eu vou encontrar com Corey Good Nosso novo palestrante do Experience 2020 ah, Com certeza vai ser muito interessante ter ele perto da gente Eu vou bater um papo aqui com ele, vamos trocar umas ideias, né? E sacramentar a vinda dele para o Brasil. Então, daqui a pouco eu volto com mais informações para vocês, gente. Um beijo, um abraço. Ô, pessoal, tudo bem? Sou eu aqui de novo, já cheguei no, no hotel. Daqui a pouco eu me encontro com o Corey. E prometo que o próximo vídeo vai ser a entrevista, tá bom, gente? <risos> Parar de fazer essa surpresa aqui. Estou com a camiseta aqui do Sphere Beer Alliance, né? Full Disclosure. Que é a empresa do Core, né? Então, fazer uma graça aí. E é um prazer, obviamente, ter ele com a gente no Experience 2020. E é um prazer ter vocês com a gente também. Tá bom? Esperem que vocês gostem do bate-papo. Esperem que vocês gostem da entrevista. Até mais, gente. Hi, everyone. I'm Fabio Santos. I'm here with Corey Good. Corey, first of all, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And uh, we're here to announce that Corey will be with us at Experience 2020. It's the event, the first time that we are doing in Brazil. The most important disclosure event in Latin America, for sure. And uh, we couldn't be uh, doing that without Corey's presence, right? So thank right. you. Right. right, thank you. It's my first time coming to Brazil. I've been invited consistently over the last three or four years. It's just never worked out. And uh, the location you're having it at, is such a beautiful location, and I've wanted to get down to Brazil for so long. I'm I'm very excited to be a part of this. Well, that's that's really nice, and uh, we are doing that at, at Florianópolis. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful island in Brazil. Brazilians call that the magical island, and we have lots of portals and interesting stuff there. Yeah, we were talking um, about there's also some ancient artifacts yes. that are close by, which is a huge draw for me and a lot of people that follow my information. So. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about uh, getting to uh, see some of those uh, local ruins. Oh, we're definitely going to see that. Uh, and we have one of these speakers is a specialist in the ruins of the place, so uh -huh. at, at Nir Ramos. So uh, we'll have a really, really special tour guide. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I wish I would have uh, uh, been able to talk to this person before we did our last movie. I'd love to have included him. That's oh, so maybe in the next one. In the next one, indeed. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> All right, so uh, Experience 2020 will be in Florianópolis, Brazil. Uh, next year will be in September, uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th of September. 
and uh, you can access the website that we're putting right here experience2020.com.br don't forget the br brazil <laughs> and uh corey uh you said that you, you've been uh, wanting to come to brazil for a long time so uh the first question is uh what do you know about brazil you know i i, I don't know uh, enough about brazil about the culture and, and the history um, you know, Brazil did pop up on my radar when I was in the programs. Okay. Uh, just because of uh, the number of uh, former Nazi uh, secret space program type people that had migrated to South America, and how you know uh, I had spoken um, publicly before about uh, a massive underground base that's there that uh, um, you know a lot of people have become aware of. Um, and also, I've, I've heard information not only about ancient uh, ruins that very few people have seen in, in uh, the, the north or the west. Um, it also happens to be the location off the coast of where the Anshar city is, deep, deep under the ocean, underground. And there's also one of their, the groups that they're associated with, another inner earth group, that is also not far away. Um, in, in, Brazil, in the Brazil region. So um, there are a few reasons why I'm excited to come down to Brazil. Well, that's really uh, interesting. I think, I think it's the first time that you're talking about this ancient city uh, on the coast of Brazil, right? I spoke about it uh, uh, on a weekly show that David Wilcock and I used to do. Oh, together. okay. All right. I, I mentioned it on that, and I think I've mentioned it in a lecture or two, but uh, I haven't gone into, into much detail, but... Uh, I could possibly do that while I'm at the event. Okay, and, and can you uh, tell us a little bit where is it? Uh, near or... Uh, uh, Brazil has I, a pretty, pretty large cross. Uh, right? <laughs> I showed you on your smartphone. Okay, can, can, I, can, I, yeah, can I say you, where you, is it? You, 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 okay, yes. it's, it's right out at the coast of Sao Paulo, the state of Sao Paulo. So I did that right. out into the ocean. Yeah, like, well, like... Uh, 90 kilometers or more. Really, yeah, in, in, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, deep there, but it's uh, in, uh, the uh, it's more or less uh, out of the coast of uh, the city of Santos, for people who uh, yeah. are actually familiar with uh, with the cities of Sao Paulo and everything. So. Yeah, they have a city that's miles and miles underground or under ocean, but in in a cavern that is this cavern is so large that uh, it's it's like the state of Texas in the United wow. States. It is, you cannot see where it ends. And it has its own weather system. Um, the uh, moisture gathers in, uh, into mist, misty clouds okay. up at the top of the cave. And uh, inside the cave on the walls is this type of lichen that eats the uh, stone. And as it does, it releases uh, bioluminescence. So it causes like a uh, light, a source of light. Uh, very dim um, in, in the area and uh, you know there are there are a lot of different uh, interesting animals down there very small usually uh, albino uh, looking animals but um, the Anshar have thrived in that area for millions of years and I was taken on a tour and I got to see how they raise their food they're really big into high vibrational food which I'm into um, as well something I speak about and that is um, Super important to them having you know, high vibrational food. So I got to see how they raise their crops, and um, I, I also spent three days down with the Anshar um, last year, and I learned a whole lot. Uh, they were trying to teach me about what we're going to go through um, in this ascension cycle. You know, we have all of these different ideas about what's going to happen, and you know they've been explaining that it's just a major expansion in consciousness and a way that we all begin to connect. That's what fourth density consciousness is. We just become more connected. And we start looking at all of our problems much differently, and we start finding all of these solutions all of a sudden. And we also, we begin to connect on a much more um, intimate level as, as people. Um, it'll be a very confusing time, but sure. uh, it's a time, it's already starting to happen. People are getting confused, they're having all these different connections, they're having relationships they used to be in that are just kind of falling to the wayside because, you know, they've changed so much in, in this process, this awakening process. So uh, a lot of these things are things I, I hope to talk about when I'm down there. 
Okay, well, that's, that's, that's amazing. Uh, you, you talk about the answer, so I'll, I'll just uh, shoot the question. Um, we were uh, together at Dimensions of Disclosure last, mm -hmm. last August, and uh, you and David were on stage, and uh, David mentioned something that uh, was not coming that much at that time, and I would like to ask you. Uh, David said that you had an encounter with the answer, and that they said to you that we are going to have full disclosure in, in three years, so I would say. Uh, 2021, 2022. Uh, can you uh, please talk about that? Yeah. Well, I don't fully agree with the three-year assessment David gave, um, but what uh, I was told is that we had a an opportunity, timeline-wise, to have disclo disclosure occurring within three years. Not full disclosure like we want, um, but uh, a lot of drips of disclosure that are meant to distort uh, what's really going on. It won't be, a lot, it'll, it'll be like 80% or 70% truth, but 30% of disinformation to, mm, okay. to keep us from knowing about the more sinister side. They want us, they want us to, they're gonna want us to think of um, angels and uh, that type of thing when we associate uh, ETs um, spiritually with anything. They don't want us to associate them with demons, um, which, uh, Many of them, quite, honest, uh, quite honestly, really are. And some of the uh, angelic beings that we've encountered uh, are higher density uh, extraterrestrials. So, you know, we just didn't have the vernacular back then to describe as something being from another world. Um, but uh, what I was shown by the Anshar is that at a certain date, uh, there's a giant solar micronova that occurs. Okay. And, um, when that occurs, it knocks out the electricity and technologies on the planet Earth. And up until that point, we had been receiving some disclosures. We knew about ETs uh, coming a long time ago, maybe here and there in, in the present. But after that, um, all of a sudden, all of these ETs begin, begin to descend from all over, all over the planet. It looks like stars falling. Okay. And they're, be they're behaving like a cosmic peace corps. They're our cosmic cousins. They're coming here to save us. Without electricity, uh, many millions of people would die. You know, no water pumping and, um, you know, uh, disease, all kinds of stuff. People would die very quickly. So they come down uh, to assist us, and at that point we have what we consider full disclosure. They bring us uh, technologies that help us heal. They bring technologies uh, not only that, they bring information about the true cosmic history, and we begin to find out uh, how special we all really are. Okay. Uh, is this a possible timeline, or is this the timeline that we are in? It, this is, you know, the Anshar, they're not from another planet, they're from another time. They're from thousands of years, if not more, in our future. and. Uh, while they were doing their meditations, they started having these weird Mandela effect sort of things about their history. And then they viewed the timeline and they saw that 17 million years in their past, uh, the reptilians had found a way to travel back into time and were messing with their timeline to try to destroy them. And so this is a giant timeline war. It's a time war. It's not a space war that's been going on. And uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh, Okay, so okay, so that that's what they saw in this timeline. Yes, that's what they saw in okay. their past, okay. which they're hoping will be our future, <laughs> because they want us to fulfill their timeline so that their history remains intact. Uh, otherwise, uh, one or two instances that break this timeline, the Anshar could never exist. Okay, and uh, we uh, hopefully, <laughs> and that and, and it appears so. Uh, this. Uh, Ancient timeline or, or the timeline that the ancient are fighting to happen is a positive timeline for us, for humanity. It is. It's, a, it's eventually a positive one, but it starts off with uh, a lot of stress. With the solar flash. Yeah, with the solar flash and, uh, um, you know, the, the past that they experienced or the, their experience was that um, the good people and the bad people were all here on the planet the solar flash occurred, the electromagnetic field exploding from the sun affected our consciousness in a way that all the positive people just blissed out and start becoming these fourth density people connecting, and all of the negative people 
just be degenerated. They became worse and worse. Okay. And they started forming their groups, and then the uh, positive people started forming their groups and kind of separated for a while until some healing was brought about from our cosmic cousins visiting us that brought them to catch, they allowed them to catch up. Okay. You know. So just to check if I uh, understood with the uh, three year uh, thing. Uh, so disclosure is already happening in, right, in, a, right. certain, in a certain way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what they're pretty much saying is that in three years it will accelerate very much. It will not be a hundred percent. It will be a little bit controlled. Right. Disclosure. Right. But it would be very different. But it now. would be significant. Okay. Significant. All right. So that's good. We're, we're hoping that it can be earlier than three yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are a number of programs. Uh, I won't name who they are, but uh, uh, academy groups that are working directly with uh, the DOD and the CIA to release certain things in a certain way. And, uh, you know, I've kind of gotten in their way a couple times. Uh, by uh, uh, I leaked a couple of DIA documents that talked about wormholes and faster, faster than light travel. And it was something that they were hoping to leak, but I leaked it first. And there was kind of a little disclosure war going on between the military industrial complex. They want to put their narrative out, very controlled narrative. And the uh, secret space program groups that I've been working with, they want full disclosure to occur. They think that you're ready to hear the entire truth about everything, while uh, most on the planet that are running it don't believe that. And it's not that they don't want you to know, it's that they don't think you can handle it. They, they honestly believe if this information came out, society would collapse. We would all start being like monkeys, flinging poo at each other again. And, uh, that's, you know, they really believe that. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. And I, I heard you. I heard you saying one of your uh, last videos that uh, the uh, the alliance has been uh, quiet mm -hmm. for some time, right? Yeah. Is this strategic? Is, is something big coming? Yes, a number of big things are coming, but uh, you know they should have come already. There have been setbacks. Okay. But uh, yeah, there were there have been a number of setbacks for the alliance. Um, a lot of them, if not all, have been discovered by the cabal groups because they used artificial intelligence to break into uh, a number of databases and, and real sneaky ways. Uh, uh, you know, the Alliance thought that they had a pretty good firewall against all of that, but uh, it turned out that uh, this AI was able to defeat it. Okay, right. that's, that's really interesting. Well, uh, talking about the, the future, so, uh, what are your uh, projects, or uh, what, what are you doing for, uh, I know you have a, a movie coming this month? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, right. Uh, the Cosmic Secret, yeah. which I was, we just uh, talked to 1099, and it looks like it's going to be uh, translated into Portuguese. All right. Yeah, so I'm very happy about that, definitely in Spanish as well. Uh, it releases uh, November 19th, they may push it back a week uh, to get uh, a couple other things taken care of. But uh, it releases in the middle of this month. Uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, it has a very spiritual connotation side to prophecy, ascension, and disclosure. It's, uh, uh, it's something that I think people of Brazil are really going to like. Um, I'm also um, working on a feature film with uh, a large platform that uh, we hope to be able to announce maybe at the end of this year, early next year. All right. um, we are uh, speaking with A-list actors, and we already have A-list directors and writers that are uh, heavily interested in uh, being a part of it. So, um, you know, we're really trying to do everything we can to bring this information to the mass consciousness through mass media. You know, uh, putting out videos like we're doing now are great. Uh, doing conferences are great. Uh, it brings people together. It nourishes their soul, it regenerates them, and gets them ready to go back out and do their mission. It's awesome. But we're preaching to the choir. You know, these are all people that are awake and ready to you know, uh, do the mission. If we want to start to seed the consciousness, we have to find ways with science fiction, uh, documentaries, all of these different ways. And, and in your country, wherever you are, you should do the same thing. This is the best way to affect the mass consciousness and to see it with positive information. 
that's something the cabal has been doing for decades with television. The te television was the best thing that ever happened to the CIA. You know, they started you know, just controlling the way we think. Um, so, um, yeah, we have some very exciting times ahead of us. Uh, a lot of interesting projects. And uh, we plan to also step up. Uh, we've released two documentaries now over the last two years. We plan to step it up. We've, we're beginning to have uh, investors come in that want to uh, be a part of seeding the mass consciousness. And some of them are coming in. They're very excited. Uh, we would like to do two or three um, documentaries a year and a few other projects as well nice. to be able to really get this information out in a big way to huge platforms and platforms that have um, subscribers from every country. Perfect. That's amazing. Um, Corey, uh, and, you, and you have also the uh, comic, right? Yeah, the graphic novel. The graphic, right. um, we've had to, um, we had some difficulties with the uh, trademark dispute. Okay. And we've, we've gotten that taken care of. And now uh, we've gotten most of the art done. We're ready to put it together into the graphic novel. Um, but we've brought in some, um, hopefully we have some new people coming in that are well-known directors from uh, animated movies, okay. you know, Disney, Sony, uh, th those types of things that are really excited about coming in and uh, helping us finish it in a, in a very interesting way that will also allow us to animate it. And we have a lot of ideas for doing animations as well. Uh, we should have a new date um, uh, published soon for when the graphic novel is coming out. Uh, for all the people that have waited, it's like it's pretty late. Uh, all of the people that have been patient and waited, we're going to give them, um, you know, uh, most likely uh, a free uh, um, subscription or membership to uh, a course that I'm about to do. Uh, oh, nice. Soon about, okay. Uh, the course I'm going to do is about uh, how how to transition from third to fourth density consciousness. Um, you know, what can we expect in that transition? What can we expect from those around us as we change and grow? And, and what happens to those types of relationships? Uh, there, uh, there's a, a number of things like that that I'm going to talk about in a, in a course. And uh, we're, we're probably going to make sure that they uh, have access to that since they've been uh, uh, very patient. Nice, really nice, Corey. Uh, it's an uh, it's, uh, individual effort, right? We have to uh, search for ourselves, right? For our, our true ourself. But the only way out is in. Yeah, perfect, perfect. But we uh, we uh, we shouldn't be doing this alone. We don't need to do this alone, right? No, no that's, we can get together. Yes, yeah, we have uh, all of the other star seeds, you know. That I'd, I'd like to describe it, and I do so in the comic book. That you know, we're, you get a picture, picture almost like an arena, but it's like a ship that's higher density ship out in space and down in where the arena is you see this planet floating and it's Earth and we're getting closer and closer to it and someone says all right this is our next objective <laughs> we're all going to go down in, in, in several waves and we'll forget just like all the other planets you'll forget who you are you'll forget what your mission is you'll forget what you are but you'll go down you'll go through hell that will be your boot camp and it will train you for your mission and then you will remember who you are and what your mission is and then you will all start coming together behind enemy lines, so to speak, and in fulfilling your missions together. And that's what you know this uh, uh, event is going to be like. It's where tribe comes together. And like I said, we nourish our souls. We come. We get other ideas about how we can go out and, and do our mission. And uh, um, it's uh, a very good way for all of us to get together and uh, uh, just reboot, refresh, and get ready, you know, for the, for the, the mission again. Perfect. That's exactly what we are doing at Experience 2020. We will have Corey go with us. And, uh, Corey, my last question. What, what can we uh, expect from, for, for, from your uh, presentation next year? Some new things. I, um, many people know the last year uh, that uh, has been a crazy year. In the last two or three years, I've had four very close family members die. You know, my, uh, my father, uh, my stepfather just passed away. My father's on hospice. He, he will probably pass before the event. Um, we've had massive uh, coordinated attacks coming at us. Uh, we even had people try to frame us for things to try to get rid of, you know, just horrible things. And it's really affected, uh, you know, my vibratory state over that period of time. 
And it got to where the Anshar and other, these other beings stopped visiting me because they couldn't tune in. Um, but they helped me very recently make some breakthroughs uh, to deal with, you know, it's very important to um, try to, in a harmonious way, which is what I've had problems with because of the frazzled state of everything, is, you know, to nurture relationships, uh, uh, to heal relationships that are damaged, uh, toxic relationships kind of remove yourself from so you can focus and not have your energy disturbed. Um, you know, and, and so you can, and also to be able to focus on all these little things about yourself. In the last year, I've had all of these things pointed out to me. And, and of course, you know, I thought I had done all of this work, and I had, but the last year, the stress of it all, it pointed out all these little things that I've been ignoring. And so I've learned a lot through that process of uh, um, kind of awakening to the darker aspects that, that you ignore that you need to deal with on the inside and the Anshar have been coming back and visiting me again and been giving me uh, some very, uh, very wonderful insight into fourth density consciousness about uh, burning of karma, how our higher self puts us through periods of burning karma, which is basically what I had gone through. Uh, a lot of people on my team are going through, uh, people, my family members, others around me. Everyone's going through the same thing. Everyone's having a very difficult time right now with relationships, with their own feelings, things they haven't dealt with. So uh, what, what I see is uh, turmoil. When I talk to the Anshar, they call them opportunities. You know, opportunities to address relationships, to address things within yourself. And uh, it's a lot easier to address things within other people. And uh, you can get caught into a reactionary mind cycle, uh, especially when crazy things are happening. And uh, throughout this process, it's been hell but I've learned a lot, and there's a lot of information that they've imparted to me that I look forward to bringing into uh, my new course, uh, into some of these uh, uh, movies that we're doing, as well as uh, the event that I'm uh, presenting. Perfect. Great. Corey, once again, thank you very much for your time. And uh, we hope everyone can join us at Experience 2020 uh, next year, September 18th, 19th, 20th, in Florianópolis, Brazil. And you can access the website right here. We're going to put right here, experience2020.com.br, okay? Thank you. It's going to be a special time. Oh, we will, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>